Hello everyone. Um, I am going to try to make a video about the empirical formula lab that we're doing in chemistry. I want to, uh, I'm going to bring up several different things about talking about doing the lab and then I'm going to, uh, I'll make another video about doing the lab book and setting that up and make sure you understand. Um, this is part of our flipped classroom experiment, so I hope this goes well. Um, first, we're going to be doing empirical formula. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, change here and show you the procedure that was given to you on Edline. And I want you to uh, pay attention to what's going on. Um, hopefully you've already read this experiment. And uh, we've already completed doing experiment this experiment as far as talking about empirical formula in class. So now we're doing the experiment. And there's a couple of things that I want you to pay attention to. Um, remember when we get ready, the purpose of this experiment is to, let me see if I can get my cursor here. The purpose of this experiment right here is to show that magnesium and oxygen combine in whole number ratios. So we're going to take magnesium ribbon and we're going to take oxygen from the air and, and react them together. We're going to burn it. We're going to wrap them. That's a combustion reaction. And we're going to do this in a, in a little container called a crucible. Um, we've not used those before this year. And so as we do that, um, it's very important that you're careful about a few things. Crucibles get very hot and they're not like Pyrex. You know how Pyrex, you can take a hot object and set it down on, on your table. But a crucible is not protected like that. It's not heat resistant. So when you you need to make sure that you are um, don't take the crucible from being hot to being cold very quickly. It needs time to cool down. Another thing is you can't tell when it's hot and when it's cold by looking at it. So be careful. You want to be very careful when you touch this. All right. Also, the magnesium ribbon when it burns, if it catches on fire, it burns in a um, white hot flame. It looks like a welder's flame. So don't look directly at it if that happens. A lot of times it won't happen. You won't see it. It'll occur while it's covered. But if it does happen and you do happen to start seeing a flame, um, actually I shouldn't even say a flame, a bright light, then what you want to do is turn away from it, let it burn for a few seconds and it'll be good to go. Um, make sure you're following the procedure here. Right here, make sure you follow the procedure and not the data table. The data table is out of order. So you're going to um, clean your crucible. You're going to get, um, after you clean it, it's going to be, of course, wet, and you're going to heat it for three minutes. And that's just to burn off all the water and get it completely dry, or as dry as we can. And then you, after it cools, make sure it's cool, you're going to find the mass of the crucible. Do not mass the cover, just the crucible. You're going to get a 35 centimeter length of magnesium ribbon. You're going to cut it up into one centimeter pieces. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly one centimeter. You don't have to measure that. You can just chop it into little pieces so it fits into the crucible. Then you're going to measure the mass of the crucible and the contents, the magnesium ribbon. Again, do not use the cover. The next part, um, it's pretty easy. We're going to just cover the crucible. We're going to place it on the clay triangle, and we're going to heat it. Um, it says heat gently for two minutes and then strongly for 10 minutes. In other words, you want to really um, let it get, the two minutes is to let it get burning. Um, hopefully that's whenever you'll have the, the glow started when it's covering. And then if you'll notice right here in this step, it says using crucible tongs, carefully tilt the cover to provide an opening for air to enter. That's so the oxygen can come in and start reacting. Heat the partially covered crucible strongly for 10 minutes. So you're going to do that, and when I mean strongly, I mean strongly. You're going to uh, have that uh, burner, if you'll look right here, um, at this place right here. You're going to, um, right here in this area, see how 
the flame is touching the bottom of the crucible. It's not on a wire gauze, it's on a clay triangle. That flame is going to be wrapped around that crucible. You want that to be get really hot. Okay? Then you're going to turn off the burner, cover it, cool it. Now notice most students think that you should weigh it here. Notice that you do not weigh it. You're going to open it, you're going to examine the contents, and if any unreacted magnesium remains. Now it's been my experience that a lot of times the top of it looks like it's reacted, but if you were to stir it, there'd be some magnesium that's still silver under there. Um, I would do that with a stirring rod. If there's any silver left, then you want to heat it again. Put the cover all the way on, allow it to cool, make sure all the magnesium are reacted. Use a dropper, and you're going to add water to just cover the contents. You want, don't want it drowning, you want to just cover the contents. And you're going to basically wash down the sides of the crucible. After you do that, holding the burner in your hand. Now what that means is that, um, grab it by the bottom, don't grab it by the barrel, the barrel will be hot. Holding the burner in your hand, gently heat the contents of the uncovered crucible by moving the burner slowly back and forth. You don't want this to start splattering out because you're gonna lose some of your magnesium oxide that you just produced. Um, waft it, try to smell it, don't stick your nose up there next to it and get a great big breath, wave it to it, wave the front to and see if you sell smell something and then record what you think it smells like if you can't tell what it smells like whether it's a strong odor or a light odor just record what you see you're going to keep heating that until all the liquid is boiled off and then you're going to go back up here to step number five and step number six um, this should not take a long period of time so if we go ahead and get started at the beginning of the class period you should be good all right so let's say all our liquid is boiled off for the second time all right, that's step number eight. The liquid's boiled off for a second time. We're going to strongly heat the uncovered crucible for five more minutes. So we're again trying to burn off any, any um, excess uh, magnesium. We've, by, heating, by adding the water here, we got rid of nitrogen um, or carbon dioxide, anything that was in the atmosphere other than oxygen. And now we're going to let it cool. When we let it cool this way, we're going to weigh the crucible and its contents. All right, so we weighed it um, just the empty crucible, then we weighed the crucible and the magnesium before it reacted. Now, in step nine, we're finally measuring, weighing it again, finding the mass, and that is what we're going to use. Now, if you, I don't know if you noticed, but throughout the procedure, they had things labeled A, B, C. These are the th this is where you would have written your data, all right? So your grams of the empty crucible, the grams of the crucible, and the magnesium ribbon before you reacted it, and the grams of the magnesium oxide, which is the product after you burned it. And then what does it smell like? Um, one good thing about these calculations here is it kind of helps you out. All right, in number one, you're going to do a B minus A. Okay, so let me let me do an example. So let's suppose that you got for the uh, mass of the empty crucible, you got 10.67 grams. Okay, and let's suppose that when you added the magnesium, it was 11.16 grams. Well, what you're going to do is, if you'll notice, um, and then uh, for the 11 point, I'm sorry, I jumped around there, you got 11.44 grams. All right, first notice that the mass um, increased, and it should, should because you added oxygen. All right, uh, we, we're not going to worry about what the vapor will let you decide what you want to put that there. If you'll notice right here in, in number one, it says it says find the mass of magnesium you use, and then it says B minus A. Well, here's B, here's A, okay, B minus A. So we're going to say 11.16 grams minus 10.67 grams, and we're going to get 0 0.49 grams. And that is our grams of magnesium, okay? I'm just gonna put a little MG right here so you know. All right? And then it says for number two, find the mass of oxygen reacted, and then it says C minus B. So C was 11.44 grams minus um, 11.16 grams. So we're taking our total, and now we're subtracting out what it was with the oxygen, and we're going to get 0.28 grams of oxygen. All right? 
Now we're moving into an empirical formula part. Okay? And so if I want to go into an empirical formula, then um, I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to scroll down. And in order to scroll down on my smart board, I'm going to have to get rid of the numbers I have here. So um, if you need to come back and look at these numbers, you can just rewind the video to right there. So I'm going to temporarily get rid of these things. All right, I'm going to scroll this down so you can see. All right. Now, so again, I'm going to go back and put these numbers in right here. So this was point. 49 grams of magnesium and this was 0.28 grams of oxygen and what we're going to do here now in number three gram atoms we don't use the term gram atoms anymore we now use the term moles so when you see gram atoms on that sheet it's the same thing as saying moles so what we're going to do is we're going to take our mass of magnesium divide it by this 24 that 24 came from the periodic table so I'm going to say point, and matter of fact, I'm going to use probably more significant digits. I'm going to do, use 24.3 grams per mole. Now when I do that math, I'm going to get, and I'm going to do this to two significant digits, 0 0.020 moles of magnesium. Okay? I'm going to do the same step with my oxygen, and my mass of oxygen was 0.28. On the periodic table, the mass of oxygen is 16 grams per mole. And when I do that math, um, to two significant digits, I get 0.017. Oh, actually, let me change that to 0 0.018. All right, and that is moles of oxygen. All right. Now, once you do that, what we're going to do is we're going to divide by the smallest. So, what I want to do now is I'm going to say 0 0.020 and 0 0.018. 0 0.018 is a smaller number. So I'm going to divide both of them by um, 0 0.018 because it's smallest. And again, because of the smart board, I'm going to have to move down a little bit. So I'm going to have to get rid of this right here. And um, I'll go ahead and put these numbers back. So this answer was 0 0.020 moles of mg, 0 0.018 moles of O. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the ratio by dividing by the smallest. So I'm going to say 0 0.020 moles divided by 0 0.018 moles equals, that's going to round out to give you about 1.2 1 1 if you um, are using two significant digits. And of course, 0 0.018 moles divided by 0 0.018 moles, that's going to equal 1. So your ratio is 1.2 mg's to 1 O. Oh. Well now, so that's our ratio. But if you'll notice, it says in the conclusion to write the empirical formula of the oxide. Well, if we round the 1.2 to 1, because this is experimental data, um, there are things that could have gone wrong in the experiment. I'm going to just round that to 1. So that means my mass is, instead of being Mg 1.2 oxygen 1, I'm going to have it as Mg 1 oxygen 1 or MgO which, by the way, is the correct answer, because if you recall in um, chemistry class, whenever you have um, magnesium, it has a 2 plus oxidation number. Oxygen has a 2 minus oxidation number. 2 plus, 2 minus equals 0. So MgO is correct. So that is the video on how to do the experiment and how to do the calculations. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on writing your um, experiment up. Um, I hope this was helpful.